All right, so let's open our Bibles. In the week, a couple of times I woke up with this, um, um, this word, and I believe it's a prophetic word over the church and over you and over your business, whatever, everything that you, that you say. I woke up and it was, came really strong in my heart. It's harvest time. You might um, have heard this before, that sometimes you just, you just feel in the spirit an announcement that there is, there, there is harvest time. And I think this, this, the, that it's ready, everything is ready, and I, I think it's gonna affect um, every area of your life. But now, one thing about harvest, harvest doesn't drop on your lap. You know, sometimes we, we think that, you know, we just have to position ourselves and boom, here comes harvest. You know, if, if the harvest is ready, it means you have to work. And sometimes people think that when there's no harvest, it means when there's a harvest, it means no work. No harvest means you're going to work. All right, harvest means, but but it's a it's a lack of work. Yeah, it's a good work. It is it is it is work. Um, um, it's like a rewarding work. You know, you go and you get it, and you see the results of everything that has. You know, the, the plowman, the seed that's been sown, the, the watering, all of that is, is all done for the purpose of harvest. And now it's time for harvest. Amen? amen. So if you believe that, say amen. amen. I believe that. So I believe it's time for harvest. I believe in this church it's, it's harvest time. <laughs> I'm so excited to what God is, God is about to do and something, some visions that, that we've got. To get going and um, we're going to do some stuff in the church. If you want to volunteer, if you want to be involved in the church, come speak to me. Come speak to Mosari Wamudimo over there. <laughs> to Anya. Um, she, she will help as well and we'll get you guys going. All right, so go to Matthew, Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. I just want on this, just, just a freebie, just to throw it in there. Matthew 9, verse 37, and, and um, the Word. Someone once said something that really got me thinking. He said, Bruce, your, your attitude towards the Word reflects your attitude towards God. Amen. It's a harsh thing, you know, because sometimes we think, you know, sometimes we don't always understand what's written. But um, I was just thinking about the power of the word. We were speaking about this on the way back. You know, um, you know how powerful words are. Words and what, what words mean to you. You know, every time we open the word, I remember uh, my pastor always used to take the Bible and he would start kissing it. <laughs> it's, like kissing it. it's just paper, but, but it's the word. And when we start to realize how powerful the word is and what a word can do for you. Sometimes we, we, um, we don't understand when someone comes to us, we grow up hearing someone say, I'm going to come to your house at 9 o'clock, I'll be there. And 9 o'clock, they're not there. Come, they come 10 o'clock. All of a sudden, the, the integrity, you know, that they lose, um, what, what's the word? Yeah, integrity to them and credibility. Thank you. So when someone says something, the, the, the word means nothing. You know, the word means nothing. And I want you to know that the Bible says, I think it's Psalm 138 verse 2, it says he set his word above his name. Amen. You know, so I want you to know what kind of integrity God has. And I want to ask you, like, what does the word mean to you? What kind of... Because we, we can't really experience the power of the word if we don't really understand that God means business when he says it. So, um, so this word is life-giving. It is powerful. It's far more valuable than any treasure that you have and you possess right now. Okay. So, so uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, he says, So Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest is indeed plentiful, but the laborers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to force out and to thrust laborers into 
his harvest. Man, oh man, oh man. Okay. Harvest to God. What is God's perspective? You know, what is your perspective? You know, God has a plan for your life indeed, but it is bigger than your career. Maybe somewhere in your career and what you have to do in your business, it is included in God's plan. But God's plan is bigger. <laughs> God's plan is bigger than this church. God's plan is bigger than tomorrow. God's plan is bigger than how am I going to get food this month. Okay, God's plan is huge. It's harvest, you know. Um, and, and sometimes we need to switch in, in that sense to understand um, what's my harvest compared to God's harvest. What does God want to do? How am I playing a role in, 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 in what he's saying when he says the harvest is plentiful? Yeah, so, and it's quite an exciting thing. You know, when you, when you have a business and it's running and successful, yes, that's awesome. But when, when all of a sudden, you know, your, your business moves from success to significance, you know, or when your, whatever it is, your studies go from just to be successful, but to be significant, that's something else. Um, so, uh, one guy comes to the preacher and he says, what am I called to do? I don't know. So he says, you're called to do what the word says you're going to do. It means you're going to, you know, go into the world, preach the gospel, you know, lay hands on the sick. It says that. So he says, but, but I was actually asking regarding my career. I don't know if I must be a lawyer or a doctor. And he says, no. Okay, we'll decide if you want to be a lawyer and a doctor and then be a doctor or a lawyer who goes into all the world, <laughs> heals the sick. And so it moves from just, oh yeah, what would I do with my liver to actually, yes, I'm influential. I am significant because yeah. I'm, I'm moving with God's plan. Yeah. And I want you to know that when, when my harvest, when, when, I'm, when my thoughts are consumed by, oh Lord, what about my little, and it's important to God, so don't misunderstand me. But when we weigh it and measure it to what the Spirit of God is doing, man, yes, it's like home to live. It's lucky to go into life thinking that, Lord, you're busy, and remember that old saying, and whatever you're doing, you're doing it with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and so, so that's the exciting thing. So it's harvest time. It's harvest time, and that's good because it, it means it's harvest time for you. John chapter 4, and go there. John 4. Hope the word does something good to you, for you. Well, it always does. So, so John 4, verse 34, he says, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish and completely finish his work. So, 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 so Jesus is completely finishing the work. There, right there. He's, he's not... We have to understand our work and his work is different. Jesus came to finish something. So when he got out on the cross and he cried out, it is finished, that means it is finished. That means God has provided the ultimate solution in Jesus Christ. Sometimes we think, oh God, come. If he comes again, then oh, everything's going to be sorted. No, it was sorted Amen. when Christ was crucified. Yeah. And when Christ was, was resurrected. And everything needs to line up with that. And God is so awesome. The moment that He did that, He knew it is done. Everything is going to be fine. But pray that the Lord sends out harvesters. You know, pray. So He says, so He says, do you not say, remember we've, we've done this a couple of times. Do you not say it's still four months until harvest time comes? And I tell you, raise your eyes. Observe the fields, see how they are white for harvesting. And just quickly check verse 37. It says, This saying holds true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap a crop for which you have not toiled. 
other men have labored and you have stepped in to reap the results of their work. Jesus just said, I've come to completely finish. I've come to completely finish my father's work. <laughs> you know, we said it about two weeks ago. I must always do what my father is doing. I must see what my father is. Now what we need to see is we need to see what the father has done. And that there is a harvest that is ripe and ready. Lord, what must I do with my life? Go take hold of the harvest. Whatever that looks like to you. Amen. Amen. It's good news. I'm trying to show you how to build a bride. You need to first see it. But you'll only understand the blessing is if you just take a little step and try it. I can do this. I can do this. When you start doing it, you, can, you, you won't believe what you can do <laughs> when you start to lay hold of it. Amen? Amen. So God, God wants, <laughs> you know, He always takes our best efforts and he, he multiplies it. Give God something to multiply. Give God something to multiply. So, um, you know, there in the back there, I have to constantly see it. It says his cities can be one. I have to look into it every now and then. I say, yes, the city can be one. Yeah. You know, the possibilities are, are endless. You know, the city will be one. Um, according to Jesus, it is one. The work is done. But let's send out laborers. Let's send out um, into the harvest. I want to be part of the harvest. So, um, amen. So I want to encourage you um, with regards to that. I want to be, be a part of God's purpose. So he says, in the saying, one sows and another reaps. I sent you, <laughs> this is good, I sent you to reap a crop for which you have not toiled. Other men have labored and you have stepped in to reap the results of their work. So now I'm thinking to myself, what is the harvest that you're wa waiting for? The harvest that you're praying for? The harvest that you want to see? And I'm going to ask you, are you ready for that kind of harvest? If you really think about this, are you ready to handle the harvest that God has given you? I want you to think about it. If Kimberly comes into to this church, are we ready to handle a harvest like that? When people come in with all kinds of questions and how am I going to do this and what must I do and I'm sick and I'm ill, are you ready to deal with that harvest? If you think about this business idea that you have and, and in God, it's a yes, but are you ready <laughs> To handle the harvest. And this is what God wants. He wants you to be harvest minded. To think about the harvest and to prepare yourself for the harvest. <laughs> so that you can reap the... the you know, T.D. Jakes is a wise man that. He once said, he said that uh, he was standing in, in front of a mirror and he started shaving. And while he was shaving, his little boy, must have been about... I don't know, 10, whatever, comes up and he sees his dad shaving, so he grabs the razor and he starts shaving, or he wants to. And, and T.J. stopped him. And it was like God spoke to him, he says, this is a blessing, but if he's not ready, it's going to be a curse. You know, it's going to be a curse. I want to encourage you guys, ready. The harvest is ready. See it and prep your heart. Prepare your hearts for what God has, has called you to do. God has given you a word, spoken a word. Tafara spoke about it yesterday and the last time he was here. He says the first words that God spoke of a man was what? Prosper. Prosper. It's, it's in your bones <laughs> that God has spoken over it. It's prosper. Yeah, prosper. And um, 
What else has God spoken? I mean, in the context of what we know, what we need to do. You know? For example, we speak about healing, healing the sick. You know, it's maybe today we've had people that's messed that up. But have you guys are confident to go out and to lay your hands on the sick? Some of us are ready. Some of us, honestly, are not. You know, and that's okay. So you need to prep your heart. How do you prepare your heart to do something like that? And I'm going to show you something that, um, that I think is, is key. John G. Lake said something significant. And it doesn't just work in the area of faith healing. It works anywhere. He says, it is easier to act your way into believing than to believe your way to, into acting. <laughs> it is easier to act your way into believing than to believe your way into acting. All right. It's easier to act your way into believing than to believe your way into acting. Um, if you just do it, if you just step out and try something, you just do it. Say, I've got the word. Okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to lay my hands. Okay, Lord, what now? Because you just said I must. <laughs> those who lay their hands on the sick, you know. Um, we, we worked with so many students, like one of, one of my jobs was to have a Bible school. We did it about five and a half years. And uh, it was amazing to see students would come, having never ministered to any of the sick people. And then we'd take them out to our, uh, outreach and uh, to a hospital on outreach. And what we did was, okay, we'd say, look at your hands. These hands... God said, oh, for the healing of the nations, the leaves of the tree, or for the healing of the nations, these hands are going to heal the sick. And they would go, and you would see some people try. And they would lay their hands, oh, and they would try or get, you know, chi. <laughs> I'm joking, but um, some kind of energy, some power. And uh, it didn't work. But when it's just lay your hands, boom, it works. Yeah. And it's so simple. But the point is, if you can take what you want to do, to like take whatever you want to do. I don't know why I'm telling you this. You look at it, it's in you to do it. Yeah. It's in you to do it. You look at your hands, you say, this is what I'm going to do. Go do it. I just felt to give you that, that, that word. You can do it. You can do it. Amen. Are you guys with me? You know, this word that's, that, that spoke to to. Um, God spoke to Abraham. He said, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Give God something to bless. Give God something to multiply. Don't sit there and wait for the thing to arrive on your lap. I'm going to say something harsh, but it's not going to. Do something. Give God something to work with. We were speaking about, you know, the importance of also giving and, uh, you know, like offerings and tithing and things like that. Most people don't want us to talk about, but I think we need to, we need to trust God because most of the times I think um, that opportunities come is through favor, is through, is through a connection, speaking to the right person and bam, God opens doors for you. Trust God. Give him something to work with. Say, yes, here's my two fishes, my five loaves. This is what I can do. Give God something to work. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. Yes, but no, eliminate. It's harvest time. Say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Nothing is going to happen until the church does something about it. Nothing is going to happen. God has never worked without a man. And Amos also says, God does nothing if he doesn't first show it to his prophets. Yeah. Let's go to Proverbs. Come on, man. What has God showed you? Think about this. What has God showed you? What do you have? What have you had? visions and things that you've given up on what are what are 
what's there that God, you know that you can do? And I'm not, I'm not meaning outrageous things. I'm not meaning like now you see, no, I see a Ferrari. Yeah. Maybe God has said, okay, maybe there's a car that you want and you've never had a car. Start somewhere. If you've got a Ferrari in mind, there's nothing wrong with starting with, I don't know, a Datsun Bucky or whatever. Get something to start with and say, God, this is where I'm going. And, and you start putting substance to your faith and take a step in the right direction. You know, when you, when you, someone, you sent me something powerful the other day. When you, when you fall in love, can you tell me the moment that it happened? Can you, you know, if you think about your wife, can you think about the moment that you fell in love? You can't remember it. You know, or when you go to the gym, you come home from the gym, you can't see that you got any muscles. <laughs> because there's some guys that feel that it's the one <laughs> who walk out in there. But the difference is when, you, when you, you've gone, people start saying, wow, yes, you're looking good. And you didn't see any difference. But you started to make progress. And all of a sudden you realize, but wait, you know, everything is paying off. You take all those visions and the things that God has given you. Where would you have been today if you started this time last year? Just take off. Just go. Just start. Just do something. All right, so I said Proverbs. Give God something to bless. Okay, let's start with chapter 3. Chapter 3, he says, um, verse... Verse 5, lean on trusting and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. Sure, don't rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, recognize and acknowledge Him and He will direct, make straight and plan your paths. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord. Turn entirely away from evil. It shall be health to your nerves. Wow. And sinews and marrow and moistening to your bones. Meaning it even affects you physically. Come on. Then he says, Honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency and with the first fruits of all your income. So shall your storage places be filled with plenty and your vats shall be overflowing with new wine. wine. Woohoo! New wine. Amen. Keep your, your, your fingers then. Go to Malachi. I'm going to read something that I don't summer. I haven't read. Verse Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. And then we're going to just speak about this for a, a clean biki. He says, <laughs> bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and prove to me now, says the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be a room enough to, to receive it. Okay, true story. This is under the law. This is not necessarily grace. <laughs> but you know what's, what's, what's interesting? Before the law came in, quickly, I'm nearly done. Was murder wrong? Yeah. Listen to what I'm saying. Before the law was given, was murder wrong? Yes. The law was given, was murder wrong? Yeah. Now we're in grace, is murder wrong? Yes. <laughs> All right. Abraham tithed prior to the law. Yeah. <laughs> During the law. And now in grace, I'm just saying there's certain principles that work. And God says, even under the law, will I not open 
the windows of heaven. I'm trying to say, can we be confident and trust God with our giving? Can we trust God with our, with our, with our efforts, with our, our, our businesses? Whatever we do, how about we get to a place again? We honor the Lord. Lord, here is something for you to bless. Yes. And we do it. Yes. Amen. I feel it's important that we trust God yeah. <laughs> with our giving, that we trust God with um, whatever we do, with our visions, and we give Him something. Yeah. Thank you, Father. I trust you multiplied. Amen. So I speak this over you today. It's harvest time. Amen. When people are in stress, you're going to prosper. Amen. Isaac sowed in famine <laughs> and got a harvest. Yeah. Come on, how much more can yeah. we do this with Amen. God? Come on. Let's just stand together. And we're going to make some confessions and affirmations and declare things together. All right. Repeat after me. Okay. Say, I am chosen, appointed, and here for a purpose. I have something to give. My life adds value. Significance to the city. I am the light of the world, a city set on a hill. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I have the mind of Christ. I have Holy Spirit power and ability. Today I lift my eyes, I see the harvest. Here I am, Lord, send me. <laughs> I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, as we made these confessions, and these affirmations. I pray that you quicken, that you reawaken, that you stir in our hearts, that you fan the flames. <laughs> And that, that gift that you've given us, that's been imparted to us, and, and that we'll be able to see by rubbing shoulders with you, that we'll have your view and your perspective. I pray for every business, every, every job, every job application, everywhere that, that um, well, anything that concerns them, Lord, that, that we acknowledge you right now, and we acknowledge that we are first you know, that we are first in your plans and in your will, know that you direct each one's steps with regards to everything. Prosper. I speak that over everyone. Prosper. 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 Be blessed. Be healed. Be set free. Come on. Father, I thank you, Lord, that mindsets, strongholds, broken, and people have the confidence to possess the land, the promises that God has given. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. I thank you for the finished work of the cross of Christ that has left an inheritance, that has left a great inheritance um, for your children. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for our city, for, for Kimberley, and um, thank you for what you want to do in our city. And Lord, that you love these people, that you love the 200, 300,000 people that, that live here. And I, I pray, I pray for for a harvest of souls to come into the kingdom, into the churches. Lord, we pray for, for all the churches that, 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 that are going for the same thing, that are believing for the, the hand of God in our city, that, uh, that churches will be full, <laughs> that clubs will become empty and turn into Bible studies and worship places. <laughs> Things will happen. Thank you, Father. The churches will become the local hub. We're going to go to church. <laughs> Thank you, Father. We, we believe that. We believe that. Big things coming. 
Amen. Amen. Amen.